guys, Jake Carlson here, host of the Modern Leadership Podcast. Are you ready to focus on amplifying your leadership superpowers? Let's go. Good morning, my friends and fellow elite achievers. Welcome to Modern Leadership, the podcast where each week we sit down with authors, entrepreneurs, and leaders to explore their journey, diving into the ups, their downs, and ultimately the lessons they learned along the way. Our goal, of course, is to show that everything is figureoutable. And today's guest expert is Jonathan George. Jonathan is known as the human hit maker because of his ability to see people's untapped potential, his methods to pull that potential to the surface, and his ability to cultivate it into greatness. As CEO of JG Entertainment, he has been coaching, branding, and launching rock stars in the entertainment world for over 20 years, as well as creating rock star brands for influencers and entrepreneurs. Now he empowers our future leaders and entrepreneurs to transform from ordinary to rock star status so that they could reach their highest level of influence, impact, and success. And today he is our modern leadership guest expert. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Hey, Jake. It's good to be here with you and your listeners. We heard a lot of rock star in that intro, and I can't wait to dive into it. I know you talk a lot about confidence and being a rock star, but before we do, give us a little bit about who you are personally. Well, I am... Uh, Of course, you know, like what it said, I as CEO of JG Entertainment for the past 20 years. And during that time, I've been able to really set the paths in the in the careers for so many young celebrities, as well as uh, top influencers and entrepreneurs. But my journey there and the reason why I'm so passionate about it is because of my own struggle of authenticity, my own struggle of trying to figure out who I am and how to step up into my own power. Um, I was 26 when I moved to Los Angeles. I was a grand champion winner on Ed McMahon's Next Big Star as a singer, and I had a record deal on the table. This was like the pinnacle of my career. You know, I mean, this seems like it was like waiting for everything to happen in my life, and it was right here at the on the table for me. And they Googled my name and they found out that I was gay. And I know we laugh about that. We're like, what? That didn't even make sense. Back in 2001, that was a huge thing. And um, my team tried to get me married. They tried to change my music, change the way I dress, the way I talk. I mean, everything about me. And I had to make a decision. I was really standing there going, do I do the Ricky Martin thing and, you know, like try to try to get married and have a beard and, and what we call a beard, you know, or do I live authentically me? And really, because I, my core values is about integrity. And I was like, Nope, I'm going to be me. If I can't walk in exactly who I am, be authentically me, then I don't want to do that because I will be miserable for the rest of my life. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start helping people rock the person that they already are rather than trying to change them to be something else. If that is, if I can do that for other people, then I will feel fulfilled in my life. Maybe I'm not singing, I'm not performing, but I'm going to help change people's lives. And and because I had just, I'd always had this potential to be a, the ability to like see people and to be able to see their their who they are and what they're capable of. And, you know, it's so funny. I took your strength finder test and it says an inspirational leader. And that's who I've always been. And I knew that about myself stepping into this because my dad was, and my parents are so big in self-development. And so I just, uh, yeah, it was very powerful to, to, to make that transition and to start helping people unleash their, greatness in the world. And my very first client was Kelsey Page. She was 11 years old when she came to me and I got her on a show called uh, America's Most Talented Kids. And she was a semifinalist on that show, but I got her, uh, you know, MySpace was the very first time MySpace came out, you know, and so I had her on there and she was number one. She was a, a, a you know, we didn't know what a social media star was, like uh, whatever, I don't even know what they called them. But she was number one in the country music division for three years at that young age because of her influence. And so I learned at a very early stage of how important it was 
to show up authentically and how to make people fall in love with you. And um, so I've been doing it ever since. And with that background, we have so much to jump into because that development of your confidence, of your inspirational leadership is what we need to take out of this episode. And your story is incredible. In fact, you would call it a flossom story. Tell me about this word flossom and what it means about turning our flaws into strengths. Yeah, you know, the thing is uh, that we all have shortcomings. We all have either it's a character flaw or uh, just something that may be a small flaw to a big flaw. Uh, but we all have flaws. And, you know, it's really crazy for me. I, I've always been tell you know, people is like they, they get so bent out of shape about things that, that are going on in their life and, and they don't want to tell the world about it. So they try to cover it. And all that does is create uh, a, a kind of a situation where people don't trust you. Well, and you're fighting against yourself because internally that, you know, that's not authentically you. And so not only are you having this battle ex externally with other people, but you're having this internal battle and you just can't grow in that way. Yeah. 100%. And I, the thing is, is that like when I started out in the music business, I knew music from a creative standpoint and I knew how to, uh, you know, I'd been teaching voice lessons and stuff like that through college and, and I just, I, I'm a creative guy, you know, so I came up with creative solutions, but I literally did not know the music business. I didn't understand a contract. I didn't understand how it all worked. You know, I was raised in church doing music. You didn't make money at this. So I really didn't know all of this other stuff. And so I, I mean, with clients, I'd be like, listen, I, I don't know how to do this, but let me figure this out. And it was amazing how people would just hold your hand and walk with me, even though I may not know, have all the answers. They knew that I had, it was really crazy because I've taken, you know, strength finder things and perseverance is one of my number one biggest strengths. So I was able to just persevere with, even if I didn't have the answer and I just was honest about it. People went with me. Um, and you know, with artists, I just had one of my artists who was on American Idol, uh, last season. And she was, when she came to me and she's 11 years old. And if you Google the world's worst national anthem singer, it's going to pull up Harper Grusin. And, 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 and it was, she's 11 years old. And the crazy thing is she's super talented, but because of the circumstances, it really was a disaster. She sounded like she was drunk, you know, at 11 years old and not a good way to start the ball game. No, I mean, it was so bad. I mean, even Christina Aguilera uh, texted her uh, to show her love and support because she's like, Hey, we all messed it up. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and so when I began to work with her, I was like, listen, you're going to have to own up to this story. It's going to be the thing that always is going to follow you. It's always going to haunt you unless you take ownership of it. When she was 15, she goes on to American Idol. And on American Idol, the very first thing they show is her video of, of her singing the world's worst national anthem. But because we'd worked through it and she was able to to to. Uh, handle it in grace and humor, which are her strong suits, uh, is really is her humor. And literally, she didn't make it to the top 10, but they she was the only artist they asked to come back and perform on final night with the top three because she had the number one watched YouTube video of the season. And that was all because we saw what she what she went through and her hero's journey and we fell in love with her. And so, you know, the thing is, is especially as a leader, if you are, uh, you know, I work with a lot of uh, companies, you know, I just got finished working with the, all the leaders and, and studio owners for the franchise of um, Arthur Murray Dance Studios, which is like one of the, like, it's crazy. They're the longest running franchise next to uh, McDonald's. Who knew that, right? But a uh, bit trivia for you. But anyway, is that if you will own up to what flaws you may have, it is going to make you a much power, more powerful leader because of the fact that you are, number one, creating trust with people. Uh, they, they like you more. And you're also giving people the opportunity to stay up, stand up and do something that they are great at, to be able to step up and, and serve their team and do something that makes them more empowered uh, rather than you trying to micromanage and cover up because you don't have the knowledge or the know-how or the power to do something. You're allowing other people to grow within your team, and it makes you such a more powerful leader. And Jonathan, I think we hear what you're saying, and I think intellectually we understand it. 
I mean, everything that you're saying makes sense to us on an intellectual level, but I want to take it to an emotional level a little bit here and say, how do we avoid playing the game of, yeah, that makes sense in my head for somebody else. That makes sense for her because, you know, she went on to be on American Idol or it made sense for this person because of this or whatever circumstance that we want to attribute to those individuals, it'll work for them. But how do we deal with the emotions internally where we say, it ain't going to work for me? Well, the reason why that happens is the reason we get this idea of, oh, I can't do that. It's because we uh, have a fear of being judged. We have a fear of self-judgment, external judgment, because we've it's something that's happened as a child, right? I mean, well, and why do we have that fear? Why do we fear so much what other people think and say to us? Well, I'll, you know, the thing is, is that we have to show up in the world and be perfect. You know, I mean, that's what, you know, it's just, it's like, this is how it has to be when that is not the truth at all. And, you know, I just want people to understand, I mean, if you watch influencers and you, you, you watch somebody like a Gary Vaynerchuk, you watch Gary just pop stuff out. He said, this is what I sucked at. This is what I was terrible at. This is what I struggled with. He just lays it all out. And we love him for it. Exactly. I mean, and we look at somebody like a, uh, a Demi Lovato, you know, I mean, this girl's got so many, she's got addiction problems, she's anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. And rather than allowing the external news and, and gossip columns to talk about it, she takes ownership of it and it makes us fall in love with her more. Uh, you look at all the influencers that you watch on uh, you know, on social media, or that's the reason why we also loved, that's the reason why the wave of TV that was unscripted, right? Reality TV, because we saw the flaws of people. And I think that if you can p realize that you're not alone and that you covering and masking it up is going to cause you more harm than it will if you will just be real with it. You you dis you disarm the haters. You disarm uh, any negativity around. It. I mean, of course, people are going to come at you, but when you just own it, and say, "Hey, this is what it is." People just don't care. And and on an emotional level, is that when you can really own up and fess up to it, it is the most freeing thing in the planet. Now, I'm not saying that you don't work on these flaws. It's you know there are flaws that will keep you from reaching your full potential if you don't work on them. Um, but there may be shortcomings in skill sets. There may be shortcomings in knowledge or, or ability. But you think about some of the top basketball players, their ability may not be, uh, you know, like Larry Bird. You look at Larry Bird, his ability is not, uh, was not necessarily being the best, you know, he had to, he, he practiced like, what do you, I think he said 300 free throw shots every single day before he went to school. Yeah. He wasn't the most athletically talented person out there, but nobody outworked him. Nobody was out committed or nobody, he, nobody had more commitment than he had. And he studied the game. He would study when everybody else was celebrating whatever he would go be and studying what took place. So, you know, I mean, where he may have shortcomings in his abilities that were like could be so natural for another player, he had to work harder and do things. So you have to you can't just sit there and go, oh, I'm flossom. I have flaws and I'm still awesome. No, but it's just owning up to it. The best leaders allow people to realize who they are and vulnerability and authenticity is your biggest strength. It is the biggest power that you can have in any workforce, in any place. Um, and it will make you one of the best leaders known to man. All right, let's give our audience some actionable steps that they can take. I know you talk about these three steps that our audience can take, including myself as the host. What can I do to create this unshakable confidence within me? Well, you know, of course, if everybody knows probably that you can go take jakecarlson.com forward slash superpower. Um, but there are uh, that you can take the test to understand your superpowers. And I am all about developing on our showcasing our gifts and our abilities, our strengths, our superpowers, our talents, whatever you want to call that. It is all about identifying what that is. Um, and because if you can walk, if I, if I'm going to create an artist or if I'm going to create an influencer and build that brand, we're going to showcase 
your strengths. We're going to showcase what it is that is the most viable part of you. Um, we're not going to showcase the flaws. Um, so, right, we're going to showcase your, your, your talents and abilities. And it's so crazy because, you know, I've, I've artists who come to me and they're like, oh, I want to be like Christina Aguilera. And I'm like, you're not Christina Aguilera, but you can be Britney Spears. And, you know, we may laugh about that and think, oh, my God, that's hysterical. But really, the thing is, is that you think about Britney Spears. She has more global impact. She has won more accolades. She has um, worth more financially. She has more number one hits. And she was my crush. <laughs> right? And so she literally is more powerful, and she may be the lesser of the talents vocally. And to realize that you are more than enough to do what it is that you want to do. You've got to have that mindset of, I am more than enough to go after what it is. Now, you may not have the the mind power of Elon Musk. You might not have the financial financials to even do certain things of Elon Musk. But if you know what your superpowers are and you have a true strong passion to go after that, you go after that with every bit of those superpowers. Um, you know, and so the second thing is about what we've already talked about is understanding your flaws. Uh, if you don't understand your flaws, you're, that was going to hold you back. And understanding your flaws is different from just identifying them. I mean, it's one, like a surface level saying, okay, this isn't my strength. That's identification. But as we move to step two, now it's understanding. Explain to us how that's different from just identifying. Well, to understand, you know, it's like, okay, I, this is a, a, an issue that I have. I'm going to, I'm going to work and build it. I'm going to work to, to make it better. I'm going to work through my issues. I'm going to work through always being late. I'm going to start showing up five minutes early so I'm not wasting people's time. Or I am going to break this habit of negative energy that I'm always carrying around with me. Uh, or I'm going to break this fear that's holding me back. So for me, I have been, with all the success that I've had in the, in the music industry and helping and building brands, I still was hitting a glass ceiling and I didn't understand what it was. I knew something was there. I was like, what is there that is holding me back? It wasn't until I realized that I had fear and I was like, oh, I've got fear. Well, I didn't understand where the fear was coming from. I didn't understand what had caused it. And I definitely didn't know how to break through it. So I, I had to identify where that fear came from. And it came from all the years of being told I wasn't good enough. And, and I, so I was so scared to, to hit, go to the next level in my career because I was scared of the judgment. And once I understood it, then I was able to fix it, able to break through it, able to correct it and be able to change it. And so the understanding and being able to do something about it, that is the most powerful thing um, with having fears and really make turning those into strengths and, um, yeah, I mean, so many, that, that fear has now become one of my biggest talking points and being able to help people is to break through their fears. And one of the things we talk about in business is that you don't always need to focus on your weaknesses. You know, in, in the 80s management style and the 90s management style, it was identify where you're weak and then focus on those weaknesses and try to make those into strengths. Nowadays, the modern management style is identify what your strengths are and capitalize on your strengths. Develop those. That doesn't mean forget that you have weaknesses. It doesn't mean not work on them. But your emphasis needs to be on what your talents are, what your mindset is, what you can actually accomplish. And put your emphasis on that and then work on the weaknesses because they'll come along with it. Yes, 100%. You know, say, so, say if an artist came in, like what I was talking about earlier, is, you know, uh, somebody who's more of, of a Britney Spears, then they're not this uh, wild, incredible singer or a musician or a songwriter. Um, and, you know, to make it as an artist, just about now is you have to be a songwriter. Well, there's ways to get around that. Let's focus on your, your performance. Let's, per let's work on what it is that you're great at and let's showcase that because that's what people are paying attention to. And I mean, you think about if you watch the end of Avengers, you didn't see Spider-Man worrying about what his, what his weaknesses are or his inabilities or the talents that everybody else had. He focused on what he could do. 
right? You think about each one of the Avengers showed up in, in their their ability and their power, not in their weaknesses. Um, and they work together to make to defeat the enemy. So um, you know, you've just got to show up in your power. You got to show up in that strength. But you also have to be real. Like, hey, I can't uh, shoot laser beams out of my eyes, or no, I'm not strong enough to to stop this plane from hitting a building. Right? You know what I mean? So yeah, and that's an interesting example, Jonathan, that you gave us about the Avengers. I think it really plays really well with the listeners. And, you know, I read something recently that they've had a really difficult time getting Superman to be popular. And the reason is, is because Superman basically has no flaws. And what they try to figure out is ways that they can make Superman look weak without being weak. Whereas when you look at the Avengers team, each one of them brought a strength to the table. But we wouldn't have watched a show if it was just 20 Tony Starks, or if it was 20 Hulks, or if it was 20 Thors, we needed everybody to come and bring their experience, their background, their personality, their weaknesses together in order, you know, in this case, we're talking about defeating the enemy, but really in our businesses and in our jobs, you know, we're surrounded by very talented people. In fact, as a business owner, my job is to surround myself with people who are smarter than I am are more talented at some of the things than I am because that helps my business grow. But at that same time, Jonathan, the fear is I surrounded myself with all these great people. What if they walk off with my business? And that can happens. <laughs> it does. That kind of stuff does happen. But here's the thing is that in order to um, a lot of times what happens when people do those kind of things is because they're not happy working with you or they're not. I mean, I've had people walk off. I've had people leave me because they thought an opportunity was better. And then they always came back and was like, hey, I'm sorry that I did this to you. But, you know, the thing is, is if you want to keep people, you've got to lead them into into greatness and to give them a and you've got to be a visionary with your people you have to make people feel here's the deal is that millennials they talk about millennials being uh, all these negative things but i think millennials are some of the most spectacular humans on the planet and you know if you want to keep a millennial working for you you've got to make sure that they're seen that they're heard that they feel like they're part of a great something bigger than themselves they got to feel like they matter within something so if you want to keep people You've got to treat them in a way that you want to be treated, that you want to feel important, that you're fit part of something that is greater than yourself and that, that you feel like you have stake in something. So, you know, so many people leave because they're, they're trashed on in companies or they just don't feel like, I mean, I've worked for, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur, but you're still always working for somebody. And so the people that I quit working for uh, and cut ties with are people who do not see my potential. They do not see what I have bringing to the table and, and not capitalizing on that. Yeah. Lack of a shared vision, shared dream, working together towards that goal. Yep. 100%. And you know that we were talking about those three things is understanding your power, superpower, also understanding your, uh, your weakness. But that third thing is how you brand yourself to shine. There is this thing, truly talent, uh, talent, success is 20% talent. The other, other 80% is how you, um, is what you, the confidence that you have when you use a talent, you know, your ability. I think this is so important. Say that again. So, so success is really only 20% talent, but tell us what's that other 80%. The other 80% is how you show up and it's the confidence you use when you use that talent is how you sharpen that talent to shine and how you brand that talent to shine. So it's like the, the third thing about it's really funny is is I didn't know I was a branding expert. You know, honestly didn't. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't really think about branding. Didn't that wasn't I was in music. You know what I mean? But what I found out and realized is the reason why all of my talent was outshining everybody is because of the branding that we did. We branded their strengths. We branded what they're bringing to the table. And man, we hit that so hard. We, we honed in on your, on their story, what they were, what people would be drawn to. And, you know, it was really funny. I had this, one of my first artists was this young kid. He was the, this, uh, movie, he was the star 
with Adam Sandler. He played Adam Sandler's son in Click and uh, Joseph Castanon. And he was a fabulous little kid at such a young age. I mean, this guy was like Lady Gaga at 12 years old. And it's like, what do you do with that? He's 12 years old. Kids don't are not going to be drawn into this fabulous kid, you know. So I had to brand him in a way that literally made people fall in love with him. I will never forget that he opened up in Kansas City for um, uh, it was a young artist back then. A lot of listeners probably know who he is, but um, he he opened up for this artist and had uh, and I was terrified because it was like, you know, he's a total surfer and and, you know, cool guy. And Sir Castanon is coming out there with knee high boots costumes and the first i'm not kidding 30 seconds people started giggling and laughing and i'm within 35 seconds they were all screaming and charging the stage you know what i mean it's so it it taught me such a powerful lesson that you have to brand somebody and make it so clear as to who they are so people know how to consume you Jonathan, this is a fabulous conversation. I love this idea of branding, and we all need to focus on this, whether we're artists, whether we're athletes, whether we're singers, or whether we just get up and go to work in an office building, in a cubicle nation, or whatever we do. A personal brand is so vital moving forward, and I'd love to continue this conversation, but alas, we've run to the point in the podcast where we need to switch gears just slightly and go to a section I call learning from leaders. Does that sound like a plan? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Jonathan, a first question. The book currently on your Kindle or bedside table, what are you reading these days? Um, I've got lots, but I, I'm not a great reader, I'll be quite honest. I like the the cliff notes of things. Um, but The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer, I think it's one of the most incredible um, things to to read and to understand, you know, we, we all talk about the, um, the law of attraction, um, and you, you can set intentions, you can set all these things. Um, but my pastor Beckwith, um, is here in LA from Agape and, and he talks about how, cause the, cause the secret, the secret came from my church, the, you know, the writer and the referring to the book, the secret. The Secret, correct, yeah, which was a life-changing book for me. It was just and, like, and made the movie the that Wayne Dyer's yes. in, and and all that whole group is in is just and amazing Michael as well. Is in it, yeah. It, but it's, what is incredible is that you know you've got to vibrate at the same level of the thing that you're seeking, and that's got to be that's you that's so you can have all the intentions you want in the world, but you've got to do the work in order to make those intentions come true. Yeah, the the thing we joked about in the secret was you know, sitting on your couch and waiting for checks to arrive in your mailbox. That's not the secret. The secret is if you put in the work, if you do the effort, then the checks will arrive in your mailbox. So what a great book. We will put that on the bookshelf. Our next question then, and you've already shared this with us, but that is your leadership superpower, inspirational leader. Tell us a little bit about why that meant so much to you. Do you know, as a kid, I I always, you think about the people that you learn from and it didn't matter, uh, if I was doing a show and I, I mean, I'd performed professionally for, you know, 10 years, but the people that I excelled under were inspirational people who literally lifted me up and made me feel like I could conquer the world. It wasn't so much, were they a great teacher? Were they, uh, it was about inspiring me to make choices and to do those confidently. And so I've always been that kind of teacher to other people because, uh, and it's worked really well. So that made me feel really good. Yeah. And when we originally created the superpower assessment uh, that you were referring to earlier, the title of that superpower was confidence. But we felt as we did more and more research that inspirational kind of encapsulated the confidence sector but also added a little bit to it. And so I think it's kind of interesting that we have the confidence rock star on the podcast who came up as an inspirational leader through the assessment. All right, our next question, a motivational quote, philosophy or mantra, something that you live by. Uh, My biggest quote that I always say um, is in order to become, you must be. And there is no other way around it. So if you, you know, I've got all these people who are like, oh, I'm going to come to L.A. And I'm like, what do you do? They're like, oh, I'm aspiring to be an actor. 
You're either an actor or you're not. It's got to be in your heart first, and you've got to become that. You've got to see that. You've got to envision that. If you're wanting to be a millionaire in your mind, you've got to be a millionaire. What does it take? And you've got to take the steps. You can't be like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. No, I'm already a millionaire in my mind. And I remember back in 2014 when I first started this podcast, and I would go around and I would say, oh, I'm starting a podcast, and oh, I think podcasting would be fun. And I remember hearing a mentor of mine say, no, Jake, you are a podcaster. And since 2014, I have been a podcaster, regardless if there's one people, one person, or thousands of people listening every episode, I am a podcaster. I love that idea. All right, Jonathan, our last question then is the book that you most often recommend or refer to friends, family, and colleagues. I mean, I think Think and Grow Rich is such a powerful book. Um, you know, it's the principles that I've, my dad has taught me ever since I was a kid because he read it. Also, How to Influence Friends. Um, how to Win Friends and Influence People. How to Win Friends and Influence People. That was a, such a great book because it takes off the thought of how I'm, I'm not important, you're important. How can I serve you? And and that is such uh, common sense, basic life thing that uh, creates happiness. It creates movement. And uh, yeah, those two books are very powerful books for me. Yeah, and both of them are classics that have withstood the test of time, and they're still popular today. So both great recommendations. Jonathan, before we let you go today, where can we find out more about you? Where can we learn how to be confident like you? You know what? Um, of course, my website, jonathangeorge.com. I'm on all social media, Instagram mainly, and Facebook. Um, but I've also got a free download uh, to how to break through uh, the noise. And it's it's about how to brand yourself in a way that is going to build your confidence so that you have, you know, we all have this imposter syndrome, then we don't know who how to show up in, in the world. And, and it, like you said, it doesn't matter if you're a uh, uh, C-level exec, or if you are if you are running companies, you're entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor or you're a lawyer. But if you want to be the most successful, your personal brand matters extremely matters. So this is going to help you get clarity. It's a free download. If you go to the websites under the free download section um, at the very top or the sidebar or whatever, um, and you can just, you can get that free download. Very cool. We'll link all of this up on the show notes for this episode. Jonathan, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast this week. Thank you for being our modern leadership guest expert. Thank you so much. Please let me know if there's anything I can do for you and your community, buddy. I really appreciate you having me on the show. All right, my friends, and a big thank you to Jonathan for coming on the podcast and talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, something that I've constantly researched and read about, something that I feel like I've always struggled with, and that is how do I have that internal confidence? And that authentic, vulnerable confidence that says, hey, look, I got flaws, but guess what? I'm flossom and I'm working on it. Everything that we talked about on this episode of the podcast can be found at jakeacarlson.com slash ML173, episode 173. And until next week, I want to wish you the very best of days, an even better life. And remember, everything is figure outable. Thanks for listening to the Modern Leadership Podcast. You can find me on Facebook at Speaker Jake, on Twitter at Jake A. Carlson, and of course the website, jakeacarlson.com. See you there.